Camila crying and being in love with an older woman is a, is a whole mood. It really is. Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video I'm just going to be reviewing the OG OG. Oh yes, the very first lesbian film to ever grace the big screen. Made Shen in uniform. I am so excited to review this film. It is not only a huge part of lesbian history, but it's a huge part of women's history and I'm here for it. I'm literally here for it. Directed by Leontine Sagan, Made Shen in uniform, which translates to girls in uniform in English, is a 1931 film based on the play Yesterday and Today by Krista Winslow. The film is about a teenage girl, Manuela, who is sent off to a boarding school. Manuela is incredibly sensitive and withdrawn, but she is brought out of her shell by a sympathetic young teacher, Elizabeth von Bernberg. However, when Manuela's fondness for Fraulein von Bernberg turns into a romantic attachment, it becomes a school-wide scandal. As a fun fact, Krista Winslow, who wrote the play, was actually around on set when the film was being made. The whole of Maid Shen in uniform is actually set in the Empress Augusta boarding school, where Winslow herself was educated. Winslow was also a lesbian and is quoted to have said about the production, the experience is one which I had to write from my heart. So this film was actually groundbreaking in a lot of ways, not just for having an all-female cast, but also in its sympathetic portrayal of same-sex attraction. Of course, in the early 1930s this did cause issues, it did. The film was actually initially banned in the US, but a heavily censored version was later released. The full version would not be shown in the US until the 1970s. The film was also banned in Germany when the Nazis came to power, and they reportedly attended attempted to burn all of the existing prints. Luckily by that point, several copies had actually been dispersed around the world, so they weren't able to do that. Also, many of the people associated with this film actually fled Germany after it was banned, because many of the cast and crew on this film were Jewish, and sadly those who could not escape Germany died in concentration camps. So that gives you a picture of just what this film was up against and how lucky we are to have access to this film today. And like I said, historically this film is incredibly important and very precious. So because of all of this, it's quite difficult for me to critique this film objectively because I'm so absorbed and fascinated by the historical aspects of it that I overlook the more technical ones. And also looking at filmmaking from from this period with today's critical eye is not exactly fair. There's a lot of differences and limitations you have to consider, but let's get into it. Look, this film is just delicious to watch. It's always interesting watching vintage film, but it's especially delicious to watch vintage film, which is a landmark in lesbian history. This film is so incredibly rich on so many levels and it contains a very powerful message message about both the Prussian education system at that time and about same-sex attraction without being overly preachy about it. It's also very accurate in its depiction of teenage girls and of women, but this production is rooted in female voice and it had a lot of female creative care, which really shines through. Now, the relationship between Fraulein von Bernberg and Manuela is obviously complex. It is a romance, but it's also immoral because Fraulein von Bernberg is much older and in a position of authority over Manuela, and yet there's this obvious spark between the two of them that is visible from the first moment that they meet, and it's intriguing. It's weird to talk about this because having been a teenage girl myself, I myself had very strong feelings for older women, and I think as a truth it's fine to express this artistically, but now as an older woman and one who has worked with children and younger people, I know that it's absolutely wrong to return those feelings and it's especially wrong to act out on them. However, I very much believe in freedom of expression and I think it's important that the truth of humanity is reflected through art and that we are also able to 
have these discussions about it. I think freedom of expression is very, uh, very important. So to keep it real with you guys, I just feel very conflicted about their relationship because it is morally wrong, but on the other hand, it's so intriguing to watch. I also found the scene where Fraulein von Bernberg kissing all the girls goodnight to be quite eerie and almost cult-like. I think this was not helped by the fact that the film is in black and white and has that kind of creepy vintage sheen to it. But what's interesting about the kiss scene is the connection between Manuela and Fraulein von Bernberg. It's not been spoken about at this point and yet they are both very much aware of it and this is expressed through Fraulein von Bernberg kissing Manuela on the lips. And I think the film was incredible at portraying their connection in the way that it did, especially considering the time in which it was made. What's also interesting about this film is the way that Fraulein von Bernberg defends same-sex attraction to the headmistress. She says, what you call sin headmistress, I call the great spirit of love which takes a thousand forms. This is a clear allusion to homosexuality and the surrounding attitudes towards it at the time. Yet when she talks to Manuela afterwards, she suggests that her feelings are something that need to be cured. And this part is interesting to me because she was clearly trying to do what was best for Manuela by echoing the headmistress's own attitudes towards homosexuality and tradition, even though she herself knows that this is destructive and she clearly regrets it but just as she goes to chase after Manuela she is stopped by the headmistress and my interpretation of this is I actually don't think Fraulein von Bernberg is so much a person in this film but rather a representation of a breakaway from oppressive tradition and the headmistress is clearly a representation of that oppressive tradition. And we see in the film how the headmistress dehumanizes the girls and creates an environment of oppression and abuse, which portrays the connection between her way of thinking and the destructive environment she creates for the children. It's also really interesting in this film how religion intertwines with the relationship between Fraulein von Bernberg and Manuela. For example, you have one of the girls reciting a Bible verse, talking about tongues and mouths, whilst we get close-up shots of Manuela and Fraulein von Bernberg looking at each other with some intensity, which I thought was incredibly bold for the time in which this film was made. We also see Manuela reciting a Bible verse just before her suicide attempt. So there's some clear messaging there about how oppressive institutions and oppressive structures can be destructive to the individual, particularly to people who are same-sex attracted. But what's really radical about this film, particularly for the time in which it was made, is the sympathetic portrayal of same-sex attraction. The film vilifies the system, it does not vilify by its same-sex attracted characters. So the film certainly stands out in that way, for sure. As I said, it is difficult for me to review this film objectively, but overall, I did feel like the editing and the cinematography were pretty airtight, particularly for the time. And if I compare a film like this to The Children's Hour, I notice a stark difference in editing and in pacing. Some cinematography and editing choices in The Children's hour felt quite forced and sometimes took me out of the film and there was none of that in Maid Shen in uniform. In fact I actually thought some of the cinematography and editing choices in this film were quite bold especially for the time in which this film was made. Overall, I love this film. It's an incredibly important piece of work, both in terms of lesbian history and women's history. In fact, just history in general. And I'm so grateful it survived through everything that it did and that we still have access to it today. I am incredibly grateful. It's a really special film. It is. Okay guys, let me know your thoughts on Maid Chen in uniform down in the comments section below. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who is a fan of lesbian vintage film. Come and join the Suffolk Underground Club. Just come and join it. It is what Fraulein von Bernberg would want. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.